What is up enthusiasts? It is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. And today is going to be my very first installment on a brand new series. This series is going to be called Honest Coaster Reviews. Now, there are a lot of coaster reviews on YouTube talking about, let's be honest, the stereotypical opinion of the roller coaster. But today I wanted to shine a light on some of my personal unpopular opinions and turn them into roller coaster reviews. Like for example, I think Voyage is overrated. What if I did a whole video talking about why I personally think that? And today I'm going to combine both my unpopular opinion series and my review series into one. This is Cedar Flags and today I'm going to start Honest Coaster Reviews and the coaster I'm going to be talking about today is Gemini. When this coaster opened up in the late 1970s, it was one of the tallest and fastest on earth. Standing over 12 stories in height, this ride was very impressive for the era, and was the tallest roller coaster at Cedar Point for about a decade. This ride rose above the trees and was truly a fascinating sight, and it garnished a bunch of popularity, making Cedar Point a premier destination for roller coasters alongside rides like Demon Drop and Corkscrew. This ride garnished an incredible reputation up until 1989, when the taller, faster, and more impressive looking Magnum XL200 opened, being the first hyper coaster. And ever since then, that ride has even had some predecessors as well. Millennium Force opening up in 2000 being even taller, and Top Thrill Dragster maxing out at 420 feet in height. Gemini is one of the more forgotten rides in the park compared to the other record breakers, but I think Gemini holds a very special spot in the park, and is something I would even call an elite coaster. It is one of my favorites at this park, in fact, it is in my top 5, over rides like all of the B&Ms, Blue Streak, and Magnum XL200 itself. So why do I like it so much? Well today, in the first episode of my Honest Coaster Review series, I am going to talk about that. First, I'm going to start off with a review talking about my thoughts in an unbiased way, and then I'm going to tell you why I personally think that this is an elite attraction. When you first see this roller coaster, it is a beautiful sight. The beautiful wood supports with the freshly repainted track, it just looks stunning. Sure, it doesn't look as stunning as some of the other rides, like Top Girl Dragster right next to it, absolutely dwarfing this ride, but I feel like this ride standing over the Gemini Midway shows some sort of dominance. When you go to the entrance, it's a pretty generic queue, but it is Cedar Point. The queue is pretty normal. It's a switchback, it's pretty normal, and once you get into the station, all that normalness goes away because the station is stunning. And when I say stunning, I mean it is just truly beautiful to look at. Now, like I said, this is a dueling coaster, so you have two tracks on each side, which is great for capacity. But if you're going to wait a little bit, you might as well be looking at the ceiling, which is a glass roof. The beautiful 70s architecture and the aesthetic of it just blows my mind. It is truly a beautiful sight and takes you back to the 1980s. The trains come in and these are those monsters that they call the old aero trains. These are on almost all of the old aero mine trains and rides like Magnum XL200 and Desperado. You sit down and pull down those old arrow restraints that are just absolutely beautiful. They are so minimalistic. Even with that seatbelt, you are barely in that seat. And the comfiness of the seat also adds onto it. It just feels very nice. You go out of the station, make two right hand turns, and go up the clickety clank lift hill. Man, do I love these lift hills. You go all the way up to the top of the lift, and this is where it differentiates when it comes to row. Remember when I said that this ride's an elite coaster? Well, you gotta ride in a certain row, and that row is the back, not the second to back, the very back. It is because of the three row cars and the fact that it will pull you over. When you sit in the back row getting pulled down that first drop, you get a pretty weird feeling. I would consider myself a pretty experienced enthusiast, one that doesn't get a lot of butterflies when I experience airtime because I feel like I've developed a bit of a tolerance for it, but on this ride I was not ready. The butterflies in my stomach flew as I soared out of my seat and got pulled down that first drop and as I get to the bottom, I absolutely slam back into my seat. It reminded me a lot of my home park hyper coaster, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood, but a little older and a little jankier. 
this first drop is not something to ignore and I'm really surprised that many people don't talk about it as much as they do. You go up into this beautiful turnaround and let me admit the turnarounds aren't really that fun. They're very slow but it makes the ride experience a little longer and if it's dueling you'll get to see you passing or getting passed by the other car. Now we go to the second part of the ride. You go into another drop which gives you a bit of airtime if you're sitting in the back. Like I said, if you're sitting in the front, this really isn't going to give you that much airtime throughout the ride. It's going to feel more like a mine train. But like I said, if you sit in the back row, it's going to be crazy. You go down into this little dip and here's where the fun really starts. You go into this nice little camelback hill that's elevated off the ground and you feel it. A great sense of floater airtime that turns into ejector and as you reach the peak, you are floating out of your seat and as you reach the bottom of that second dip after that hill, you slam back into your seat. Go around into a turnaround and then you're going back into that same exact sequence. Except a lot stronger this time. This is my favorite moment of the ride. This airtime hill during the third fourth of the ride that goes right under the supports. You have a great head chopper that is right after one of the great airtime moments at Cedar Point. Now when many people say that they ride Magnum for the incredible ejector airtime that hurts your thighs, I look at this moment. I think this moment personally tops any moment on Magnum when it comes to the pure pain that you're feeling in your thighs as you get lifted up and the feeling of your butt just slamming down in the seat as you experience that head chopper. I'm a short person myself but I still sometimes put my hands down as a reflex. The finale of the ride consists of a few bunny hills that leads into a helix and the bunny hills really do depend on if the trims are on and what rows you're sitting in. They can either be okay or they could eject you out of your seat like an RMC. And then you get the finale, the only part of the ride that I'm really not looking forward to, the final helix. The profiling's a little off and for the wooden support structure at the time along with the technology that they had with them, it just didn't come out right. You go back to that beautiful station and talk about how great of a ride you just got. So, why do I think this is an elite ride over rides like Magnum XL 200? Well, let's get right into that. I simply think that this ride is an elite roller coaster, especially in the back row, just because of how insane the airtime really is. I don't really know why enthusiasts don't talk about it this much, but there are specifically three moments on the ride that are, in my opinion, S tier airtime moments. The first drop, that first camelback, and that second camelback going under the first camelback. These three moments right here are what makes this ride an elite coaster in my personal opinion. These three moments eject me out of my seat and slam me right back into the ground. Like I said, it does remind me a lot of Phantom's Revenge which gets all the hype in the world. But when I see people ride Gemini, they say it's mid at best. And one more thing is that I've gotten to ride Gemini on several different days, several different climates, and different rows and different temperatures. So I feel like I have a great sense of how the ride feels. Anyways, before I get the video conclusion, I just like to say that once again, this is all my personal opinion. If you have an opinion, let me know what it is down in the comments below and remain civil to each other. I would love to see it. And well, let me know what you thought about the series and let me know what coasters I should do next. If I have an unpopular opinion about them, I'm going to talk about them. Until next time, this is Cedar Flags and I'll see you all later.